Hey, I'm Rob Jones and welcome to Tech Talk on Loop TV. This episode is the first of three parts looking at Apple's pro audio application, Logic. I normally use Logic to produce dance music, so this time I thought we'd try something a bit different and see how it fares when being used to create something a bit more acoustic. So we're going to be using it to record and mix a fantastic singer and songwriter based here in Berlin called Miranda. In the song we're taking a look at, Miranda is singing and playing acoustic guitar. So I'm going to show you how to record those parts and then how to create some accompaniment to go with them. So let's see what Logic has to offer. When creating a new session in Logic, you have a series of template sessions to choose from if you're not so familiar with how to set things up yourself, or even if you just want a quick arrangement of some kind. Here, there's an option called Songwriter that contains all the tracks you might need for laying down some guitar and voice, so this sounds ideal. Clicking through the tracks, you can see you've got instant setups for recording different types of guitar, as well as different vocals, with various effects inserted onto each track, and there are even backing tracks like drums, ready-made for you to play along to. If I open up the mixer, you can see that in addition to having effects pre-loaded here, each track also has three sends set up on buses 20, 1 and 2. Over on the right side of the mixer, you can see that buses 1 and 2 go to a couple of auxiliary tracks, which have a reverb and a delay on, whilst bus 20 is being used as the input to a track called Headphones Mix which you can route to the headphones output on your interface, if you have a separate one. So, to change the levels of the tracks sent to the headphones mix track, you can adjust the first send dial, whilst increasing the second or third send adds reverb or delay to that track. To simplify the session, you can remove some of the tracks from the arrange window. This is done simply by dragging them out of the window and you can rename tracks easily from the arrange window too. Ideally, when recording voice and acoustic guitar, you need at least two mics, one on the guitar and one recording the voice. However, you do get a lot of spill this way, meaning that the guitar gets picked up by the voice mic and vice versa. So a better way of doing it is to record the voice and guitar individually. As Miranda is used to singing and playing at the same time, the best way to approach this session first was to record her singing and playing together, and then we'd have a backing track to work to. When you want to quickly create a new track in the Arrange window, it's easy to do as you have a couple of switches at the top, one of which creates a new track with duplicate settings of the track that's currently selected. Whilst recording, Logic has a click track that plays along so that you know exactly where the beats are. However, the drums track actually has a pre-programmed beat on it, so that when I hit play, you can hear you also have the option of playing to drums, rather than just a click. Miranda went for drums, so I just turned them down a bit and turned her mic up and we went for a take. Once the backing track was laid down, we could record in the vocal and guitar one by one. To record the voice, we just put a bit of reverb on the vocal track by turning up Send 2, so that it sounded better in the headphones. One way of recording in Logic is to do multiple takes, rather than just a single one. This allows you to create a comp, like I showed you in the record series earlier in the year, where you can choose different bits from several takes to create the best sounding riff. To do this, you just set up a loop in the arrangement and then record in as many takes as you want whilst the song continues looping.
can see that each recording gets stacked up one on top of the other, and you can show or hide them using the triangle in the top corner. Then, to select a different one to play, you just click on it. And to play a section from a particular take, you just drag across that section with the mouse, and then trim either end to change its size. That comp riff can then be pasted to other parts of the song, like a normal audio region. If you want to create more backing to play along to when recording, then the easiest way is to route through the selection of Apple Loops that you get with Logic to find something in there. Under the Loops tab in the Media area, you can search for different instruments with a series of filter switches to narrow the search down even more. The list at the bottom gives you handy information about each loop, like the tempo and key. Although you can change both of these parameters, of course, the less they deviate from these values, the better in terms of sound quality. So we want to find something under 100 BPM, ideally. Then when you've found something suitable, you just drag it to the Arrange window to create a new track for it. The loop automatically synchronises to the song tempo, so you don't need to worry about time stretching it yourself. If you just want it to continue looping throughout, then you activate Loop in the Region Parameter box, and then trim the loop end position to wherever you want it to be. Loops can also be found in sample libraries using the browser in the media area. Most sample packs you can pick up today, like this Real People one from Loopmasters, acidize their loops, which means they've also been analysed and contain tempo information that allows them to work like Apple loops that can be dragged into a session to automatically sync to it. The other part I wanted to lay down was a bass line. In order to keep a natural sound to the session, I decided to create a simple bass guitar part. A couple of bass tracks came preloaded in our template session, so I picked one of those to use. This track is a software instrument track, meaning it's for recording MIDI, not audio. The instrument on the track is EXS24. This is Logic's main sampling instrument and it comes with a factory library containing a whole load of different sampled instruments. The bass guitar preset that's loaded can be played by either drawing in MIDI notes into the piano roll window, or by playing them in. You can play them in using a MIDI keyboard, or the computer keyboard, once you record enable the track. To use the QWERTY keyboard, you just hit caps lock, which brings the caps lock keyboard up on screen. This shows you what the QWERTY keyboard keys do. The bottom row sets a velocity, or volume, whilst the numbers along the top set the octave range of the keyboard. And the keys in the middle are mapped to just over an octave of MIDI notes. Once you've chosen the velocity and pitch of the MIDI notes, you can hit record and play in a bass line. After you've recorded in some MIDI notes, it's easy to edit them in Logic's Piano Roll window. The Tool menu, brought up by pressing the Escape key, allows you to select the Quantize tool, where you can click on any notes to make them snap to a division of the bar that you set in the Quantize box above, or the Velocity tool, which allows you to click on notes and then drag up and down to increase or decrease the velocity, making them louder or quieter. The bar in the centre of a note, as well as its colour, provide a visual guide to its loudness. That's all for this episode. Next time, we're going to continue the tidying up process by looking at the audio warping feature called Flex, introduced in Logic 9, and how easily it can be used to change the timing of our recorded audio. We're also going to look at how to make adjustments to pitch, both in the sample editor and using Logic's effects. See you then.